Well, uh, welcome everybody. My name is Dr. George Sparks, and this is Biblical Archaeology from the Ground Down, sponsored by Bible Interact. Today I have with us Dr. David Graves. He is now in Portugal, and he agreed to do a podcast on a very unique archaeological discovery that was excavated at the Herodian. And I'm going to let him fill you in on the Herodian, um, just in case you're not aware of that uh, uh, archaeological structure not too far from Bethlehem. He received his PhD at Aberdeen University in Scotland. He was an assistant professor at Liberty University, now retired, has decades of experience over in the Near East, digs like the Temple Mount Sifting Project, also Tel El MacArthur, one of the uh, candidates for Biblical Eye, if you will, also Biblical Shiloh, and Tel El Hammam, Another candidate, which many believe is the, the location of Sodom, of the epic of Sodom and Gomorrah. Today, we're going to talk about, or Dr. Graves will talk about, the artifacts re referring to this infamous character in the Bible, Pontius Pilate. Welcome Dr. to our video on the fascinating discovery of the Pontius Pilate inscription in Caesarea Maritima in 1961 and the ring found at Herodium, which was recently published in 2018. We begin in the first century, in the heart of the Roman Empire, a man named Pontius Pilate rose to power as the fifth prefect of the Roman province of Judea, who served under Emperor Tiberius from 26 to 36 AD. Not much is known about his early life, but it is believed that he was born around 1 BC in the Roman province of Hispania, which is modern-day Spain. Pilate's career began when he joined the Roman army and rose through the ranks until he became the prefect of Judea. As prefect, Pilate's main responsibility was to maintain Roman control over the region and enforce Roman law. During his time in office, he faced numerous challenges, including handling the religious and political tensions in Judea. One of the most significant events associated with Pilate's rule was his involvement in the trial and crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. According to biblical accounts, Pilate reluctantly ordered Jesus' execution, even though he found no guilt in him, giving in to the demands of the Jewish religious leaders and the crowd. Pilate's governance was marked by a series of controversies and clashes with the local population, with his decisions often leading to unrest and protests among the Jewish people. Historical records suggest that his rule was a mix of authoritarianism and attempts to maintain stability in a volatile region. After his time in Judea, there are conflicting reports about Pilate's fate. Some historical accounts state that he was recalled to Rome due to his harsh rule, while others suggest that he faced political consequences or even exile. The exact details of his later life and death remain unclear. Nonetheless, Pilate's role as the prefect of Judea and his involvement in the trial of Jesus have made him a significant figure in both biblical and Roman history. However, it was a typical day in 1961 when a team of archaeologists under the direction of Antonio Frova were excavating the ruins of the Caesarea Maritima Theater in Israel. Little did they know, they were about to make a discovery that would change history forever. They uncovered a limestone block with an inscription that is now on display at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. With a replica also on display at Caesarea Maritima and the Archaeological Museum in Milan, Italy. It is known that Pilate resided in Caesarea and only visited Jerusalem on special occasions, making it fitting to find an inscription bearing his name in Caesarea. In addition to providing evidence of Pilate's existence, the inscription also clarifies Pilate's official title. The Gospels refer to Pilate as a governor while Tacitus refers to him as a procurator. This discrepancy sparked debate over his actual title and rank. However, the Pilate inscription settled the issue once and for all, revealing that his official title was prefect. While this discovery may not directly prove that Pilate spoke with Jesus or that the crucifixion took place, it does add weight to the historical reliability of the Gospels. By corroborating the existence of one of the major characters, the inscription supports the overall accuracy of the biblical accounts. The next archaeological find associated with Pontius Pilate is the discovery of his ring. In 1968, Gideon Forster led an excavation at Herodium, a fortress constructed by King Herod the Great in the Judean Desert. During this excavation, a copper alloy ring was found in the eastern etc. After being cleaned and photographed in 2018, the ring revealed a depiction of what is believed to be a wine crater jar and the Greek name Pilato. This immediately caught the attention of scholars and historians, 
as it is believed to have belonged to Pontius Pilate, the prefect of the Roman province of Judea. But what makes this discovery even more intriguing is the research conducted by Dr. David Graves, a retired professor of archaeology at Liberty University. In his article, Pilate's Ring and Roman Religion, Graves delves into the symbolism and religious significance of the ring. All three coins which Pontius Pilate commissioned depicted ritual elements of the imperial cult so this practice was top of mind for him and consistent with a crater or wine jar reproduced on his ring. Graves argues that the ring's design includes a depiction of a ritual vessel called a capus, which was used in Roman religious ceremonies. It is depicted as a wine jar called a capus depicted on many Roman coins along with other imperial cult utensils. Sometimes it was a simplum a shallow bowl with a long handle, used to pour wine or water as a libation to the gods while on other coins it was a wine jar with a handle. Graves argues that the inclusion of the capus on the pilot ring indicates a connection to Roman religion and beliefs associated with the imperial cult. But what makes the pilot ring even more significant is the fact that it was found at the Herodium, a site closely associated with King Herod, a vassal of the Roman Empire. Ehud Netzer discovered Herod's tomb at Herodium and a memorial monument was erected near his tomb. His sarcophagus is displayed in the Israel Museum. The pilot ring is a prime example of how archaeological finds can reveal valuable insights into the past. In conclusion, what is clear from the evidence presented is that the appearance of the amphora, crater, cantheros, capus, simplum, and culullus, as vessels associated with Roman cultic practices and sacrifice, is well established and connected with Pontius Pilate. While the amphora and crater, deeply rooted in Jewish thought, in the case of Pilate, and other Roman rulers, the symbolism was also deeply rooted in Roman religious practices that were palatable to the Jewish population. These two artifacts clearly establish Pontius Pilate in the historical record not only from the written records but now also from the archaeological material culture. All our books are listed on our website smyrnaean.blogspot.com and available on amazon.com. Also, the article on Pilate's Ring is available free of charge at academia.edu. Pilate, Dr. Graves, welcome to the program. Great, George. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be with you. Um, yeah, today we're going to talk about Pontius Pilate and a few of the discoveries that are connected with him. Uh, now, many people, of course, know Pontius Pilate from the, uh, the Gospels as the one who had uh, arrested and sentenced uh, Jesus to death. He's a historical figure. Um, he served as the prefect of Judea during the first century AD. Well, not, not much was known about his early life. It is believed that he was born about 1 BC in the province, the Roman province of Hispania, which is modern day Spain. And many probably don't know that fact. His career, he served in the Roman army. So he was a Roman um, soldier. He rose through the ranks and eventually became the prefect of Judea, of uh, prefect of Judea in around, and he served there for 26 to 36 AD. During his time there and tenure, he faced several challenges, including managing the religious and the political ex the tensions that had arisen in Judea. One of the most significant events associated with Pontius Pilate was, of course, the trial and crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. And according to the biblical, biblical accounts, Pilate reluctantly ordered Jesus' ex execution uh, despite finding him not guilty, yielding the demands, yielding to the demands of the, the Jews um, and the crowds that had gathered for his sentencing. Now, up until 1961, uh, there had not been a physical um, archaeological artifact that identified who Pontius Pilate was. He's mentioned in the Gospels, all four of them, in fact. Um, Tacitus, a historian from the time period, Josephus from the time period, and Philo all mention um, Pontius Pilate. But we didn't have any physical evidence until an excavation was done in Caesarea Maritima, uh, that's on the coast of, next to the Mediterranean Sea, 
a seaport. This is where Pontius Pilate lived. Uh, it was excavated by Antonio Frovera, and it was found in a Roman theater. It was part of one of the steps, one of the seats or steps on the theater. Uh, when they flipped it over, they found the inscription on the underside of the name of Pontius Pilate. It had been used in what we call in archeolo archeological terms, secondary use. So it was not used, it was primarily a sign that had been erected for something that Pontius Pilate had done, uh, but it had in the, in the decades later, had been turned over and had been repurposed uh, for a step in the theater or a seat in the theater. Um, they were the first to do, um, you know, re repurposing, recycling, if we might call it today. So um, Pontius Pilate lived in Caesarea, and he went. He only went to Jerusalem on special occasions, and so it's not um, strange that we should find um, a stone placard or stele with his name on it. Read Tiberium of the Caesareans. Pontius Pilate, prefect of Judea, has given. That's all it says on it. The rest of it had been eroded away. Other part of a large inscription dedicated to a temple to Tiberius in Caesarea or um, commemorating the restoration of the Caesarea Maritima Harbor, um, as Josephus describes. Or we're not sure exactly what it was used for, other than a step in the theater. <laughs> I'll show some photographs of it, and it's today it's found in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, and there's a, a replica that you can see in Caesarea Maritima today. Uh, my photograph I have is of the um, replica in Caesarea Maritima. The inscription I'll call, clarifies the uh, title of Pilate because that was disputed. The Gospels speak of him as a governor, Tacitus speaks of him as a procurator, and this particular inscription speaks of him as a prefect. We know that he was called a prefect, procurator, and a governor. Um, probably the last that we have in this inscription is the one uh, that is commonly accepted as a prefect. While this discovery does not prove that Pontius Pilate spoke with Jesus or um, demonstrates the crucifixion took place, it does support the historical reliability of the Gospels in the Bible in collaborating the existence of one of the major characters in the crucifixion uh, events. So we have them now um, in writing in stone as a historical individual um, from the Caesarea Maritima inscription. Now we jettison ahead to another um, artifact that was discovered, which is quite famous. This one is called Pontius Pilate's ring. So we have a ring that was discovered at the Herodium in Israel. Uh, this is where Pontius Pilate would hang out normally in the wintertime when it was more, the climate was better. So he would go there. The Herodium was built by Herod. It's a, a large conical shaped uh, mountain, basically. It looks like a mountain. And on the inside it had been excavated uh, with many rooms. There's a synagogue. There's many different rooms. In fact, Herod was buried there and he was discovered. Uh, his tomb was discovered here recently. Pontius Pilate's ring that was excavated on an earlier excavation, and then it was published just recently, and I published an article on it in the Near East Archaeological Society. What's significant about it is that it has the name of Pontius Pilate or Pilatus on the ring itself. So the name Pilate is on the ring. There's been quite a bit of debate as to, um, it's believed to, be probably the ring of a uh, a diplomat working for Pontius Pilate. 
Um, he may have been stamping some of the documents and perhaps some wine. There's a crater that is embedded on the image. I've drawn an image. I did, I did a, a watercolor of it, um, as well as a, there's a photograph of the, um, of the ring as it was discovered. A lot of controversy over the name of the, on the ring, uh, whether it was Greek or Latin or um, it was actually in Greek. Um, but what brought my attention to it was the image of the crater on it, believed to be a wine crater. The wine crater was, I thought, significant because as I look back at the coins that Punch's Pilot published, they were all connected with the imperial cult, the cult of worshipping the emperor. So every single coin, all three of them, that Pontius Pilate had published during his rule in the region had an image of the imperial cult on it. And so I wondered if it had some association to the imperial cult. And so I did my research on it and, and published in the Near Eastern Archaeological Society Bulletin an article called Pilate Ring and Roman Religion in uh, 2019. Um, I think that the ring was discovered or was published um, in 2016, but had been excavated much earlier than that. The ring itself, I think, is very authentic. I think it's Pontius Pilate's ring, and I believe that uh, it had something to do with the imperial cult that Pontius Pilate continued to uh, reflect on all the coins that he published and minted uh, during that time period. I'll, I'll show a photograph of all three of them and the um, the imperial cult symbols that are that that are found on all three of them. So those are the three or the two artifacts that we have from Pontius Pilate that identify his name and uh, the historical identity uh, of this character we find in all three or all four of the Gospels. Actually, we have the Pontius Pilate stone inscription found at Caesarea Maritima, and then you talked about the ring. It looks like it's made out of bronze. And that was found at the at the Herodian. I'm not quite sure if it's like three miles away from Bethlehem, the distance. But I remember when I was in Bethlehem looking out at the horizon and I asked my guide, I said, nobody ever mentioned a volcano this close to Bethlehem in any type of reading that, you know, that I <laughs> studied. And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, right over there. And he goes, well, that's the Herodian. We never hear about the Herodian that much because it's not in the Gospels. It's not in the New Testament. But it's a fascinating location. I think it's one of my favorites when I visit uh, Jerusalem. When you look at both sides of it, um, from Bethlehem looking toward the Herodian or Herodian looking toward Bethlehem, mm -hmm. I was struck by how close it was. And when the Gospels speak of the Remember the the martyrdom of the of the children. Probably this is where he was standing when he looked across and and uh, said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna kill all the male all the male children in Jerusalem," you know, because Jesus was being uh, was being born there, and he didn't want to have any rivals. Well, that's typical Herod. He killed his own kids. Didn't Caesar say, "You're better off to be a pig than one of Herod's sons." Because yes. of Judaism, our pigs are unclean, so they won't touch a pig, but he definitely touches his son. So yeah. he, he, he annihilated a lot of his own family. Yeah, uh, many many commentators try and uh, downplay that and say there's no historical record of, of the destruction of the children in Bethlehem, but it certainly was not out of his character to... Uh, to, to destroy people. If he's going to kill his own family, he certainly had no problem in killing children found in, in Bethlehem. And, uh, you know, it's very visible from Herodium to see Bethlehem. So that's what struck me when I was there, just how close it was. He was actually looking at the place when he gave the order to kill those children. Those are two artifacts. You also talked about the third, and that or more common are the coins, the little yes. bronze coins. I believe they're called the puta. They're very small. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe a type of coin that is referred to as the widow's mite. Because you got a lipta. I think that's the smallest. And then the puta. But I think the Pontius Pilate is the puta, a little bit larger. 
And yes. in the scriptural narrative, it talks about the widow's might, even though there are all kinds of different coins. I'll have a little more information in my video that I'll produce uh, describing them. One looks, one coin looks, two of the coins actually have the, uh, and it looks like a fiddlehead, what we call a fiddlehead here in Canada. Um, it's the fern that goes up and curls around looks like the head of a fiddle. And so it's um, it's one of the images, kind of looks like a staff. Uh, I'll give the technical names in the uh, video. So um, the article I wrote is quite, uh, it has all the documentation, all the footnotes, all the academic material um, showing the comparisons and why I believe that the uh, crater on Pilate's ring was probably connected or associated with the imperial cult that was so um, um, prominent in Pontius Pilate's um, mind as he was creating these uh, coins for the, for the time period. I read that it's a structure that can actually be a man-made structure actually that can be seen in space, kind of like the Great Wall of China. That's yeah. how huge it is. Yes. The base of the Herodian is actually larger than the base of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Yes. So when somebody visits there, it's just a phenomenal structure. And uh, maybe there's an indirect mentioning of the Herodian in the gospel when Jesus said, I believe it was to his disciples, if you have a mustard seed of faith, you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. Maybe he said that because it was common knowledge that Herod actually had one mountain removed or large hill removed and put on top of the Herodian structure so that it would be more grand and he could put his palace on top of it at a much higher level. So here we had an individual at the same contemporary time of Jesus, if you will, that did almost just that. Removed the mountain and stacked it. And Jesus said to his disciples, well, you could also say to a mountain be removed. And I think maybe that's an indirect reference. I don't know. Makes sense. Sounds good to me. But uh, this is a fantastic uh, lecture on uh, unbelievable artifacts. Once once again, the Pontius Pilate's ring and the inscription. And we also talked about coins. Um, and I really thank you because you also have a publication out. People go can go online, I believe, and get the publication. I found it uh, last night, and I went through it and read it. I believe it's a little over 20 pages, lots of illustrations, fun read, and I recommend people go and do that uh, because we can only talk about so much on a podcast. But it does yeah. bring this, these, this type of information to the listener's attention so that you can uh, retrieve that and use it at your at your church or at your synagogue, wherever you like, because it is a solid biblical, well, we could say archaeological reference to a biblical event during the time period of Jesus. Thanks for your time, uh, Doctor. And this has been more than interesting and uh, a whole lot of fun. Thank you very much. Great. Good to be with you, George. Thanks.